What's up everybody? Welcome back to Patio. My name's Jake. You're watching Rum and Cook. Today on the channel, we're wrapping up our series. We talked about the Yoder Pellet Grow. We talked about the Lynx Gas Grow. Today, we're talking about our Komodo Komodo, Komodo style grow, and just sharing some information of things that I think that you need to know before you buy one to help make that decision process easier for you. Grilling season's here. It's been here for a little while. We're almost at June, so you, know, you should have been grilling for at least a few months. It, unless you're like me where I'm like the, the U.S. mail. The postman goes around, it doesn't matter if it's sleeting, raining, snowing, what, I'm grilling all year round. Uh, I, I just, I like the flavor of grilled food, so if I can cook it outside, I definitely am. But if you're one of those people that is a fair weather griller, no problem with that, but you should be out grilling. And maybe you need a new grill. So let's talk about some of the pros, some of the cons, give you some tips. We'll talk a little bit about brands. Pros. Number one pro on this guy is quality of food. Can't stress it enough. If you've never tried food off of a Kamano style grill, you don't know what you're missing, right? This guy has some advantages. Number one advantage is this is made out of very heavy ceramic material. And what happens there, this sucks up the heat all the way around it and it radiates that heat back in the food so you're getting 360 degree cooking from all that heat energy that's been absorbed into the material around your food in addition to that you're getting convection cooking right we've got some airflow that's going around this guy works we've got a vent in the bottom we've got a vent in the top temperature is controlled by how much air is allowed to flow through the grill and therefore allow the charcoal to burn uh, more so, you know, we've got some convection cooking. Now, the thing about air is that it actually wicks moisture away from your food. So a Kamado is great because there's a lot uh, less air movement than any style cooker out there. So you get some very, very juicy uh, meat. You know, this one in particular has very, very little airflow, but it has a special shelf system in here that allows the air to flow directly through the charcoal so we get a very, very clean burn at the same time. And then, like any other grill, the food sits on a grate and gets temperature cooking that way. So you've really got three styles, three different types of um, energies that are cooking your food here, heat sources, and that just makes great food. The number two pro of something like this is uh, versatility. You can cold smoke, you can smoke, you can grill, you can make pizza, you can bake bread. There is nothing you can't do on this grill. We can do everything from a cold smoke to go all the way up to 900 degrees, no problem. If you're gonna do some pizzas, we've got our pizza stone here. It's right up in the dome, so we get to take advantage of that radiant heat cooking the top of it. Uh, it's pizza on this. It's pretty darn amazing. I did a pizza video battle. I'm gonna redo it. I'm probably gonna do a calzone one. My Lynx gas grill surprised the heck out of me and I was kind of disappointed I didn't try that many years ago. Uh, but you know, this thing makes some amazing pizza, calzones, anything like that. Uh, but you've got a lot of versatility on here. There's nothing that you can't cook on this thing. Uh, another pro about this guy is that we have three levels. So you can't see it in here, but we've got a level down here We've got a level down here and we've got a level up here. You can cook a ton of food, right? This particular model is the 32 inch one. So um, we've got a, a ton of room. And if I wanna smoke a bunch of food, right? I can just light the quarter basket here and all this area here doesn't even come close to the flame and we get that beautiful smoke flavor in there. Very tough to beat. You know, those are kind of your, your three main pros about something like this, and they're big ones. I almost forgot about one other pro. Something like this, there is a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get it dialed in, you don't have to babysit this very much. These things are rock solid. You got your temperature set at 250. You know, there's been times where I've got my, my uh, pit probe, my digital one set at, you know, 250 and I'm at 149 and it's just varying a half degree, not setting off my buzzer. And I'll sit there and watch it and it'll do that for hours. Uh, so they're very, very stable. And once you learn how to use one, um, you know, it's not something that you've got to babysit, which is, which is really nice about that. 
let's get into some cons uh, to, to kind of go off that, you know, cons are subjective on this one. I don't think there's a lot of um, cons you've got to be concerned of, more things you just got to be aware of. Number one, there is a little bit of a learning curve. It's not a huge one. Uh, and I think after you did five or 10 cooks on it, you'd have a very good idea of how it worked. Uh, are you going to be able to cook amazing food every single time? No, you're going to have to learn. Uh, but that, that really depends on, uh, you know, all the types of cookers. There is a learning curve with them. This one, you just got to learn how to lock in your vents a little bit. And specifically this unit, right, this, this guy weighs 930 pounds. It's very thick ceramic material. Uh, all around it. So once this gets heat soaked, if you overshoot your temperatures, getting this guy down is very, very difficult. Um, so, you know, you want to start to shut down your vents early and get it dialed in. So there's a little bit of uh, a learning curve and that's going to happen on any Kamano grill, but don't let it intimidate you. There's tons of videos out there on how to use one of these things, whether it be a Big Green Egg, Komodo Joe, or one of these guys, they all work the same. So it's not really a con, but it's just something to be aware of. Um, another con is they take a little bit of time to get started up, especially in the winter, right? This is ceramic. You don't want to sit there and fire this thing up to 600 degrees in 20 minutes. You're going to cause some problems, right? This particular unit is unlike the other units on the market where we've got a NASA grade grout here. And what happens is this unit actually expands, but it's got to get hot. This grout's got to get hot. And what happens is the whole unit will kind of expand and contract depending on the temperature. The other units, if you fire them up too hot, you'll just crack them, right? So in the, in the winter time, you don't want to be doing that. Um, and if you fire this guy up too hot, it doesn't crack. But what happens is the grout cracks and then you've got to regrout it. So in the, in the winter time, especially, you've got to take your time firing them up a little bit and you want to let it get up to temperature and get heat soaked. Um, and, you know, even in the summer, you want to let this get heat soaked because it cooks the best once it's heat soaked. So there's a little bit more of a startup time than say a gas grill. Well, I turn it on and I'm ready to grill in 10, 15 minutes. Uh, so not necessarily a con, but something to be aware of. And again, this is, this is why I have multiple grills. During the week, I don't necessarily have time to come out and start this guy up and wait for it. I'm coming home, I'm hungry, I wanna get the grill in. Uh, so I don't use this as much during the week. On the weekends, absolutely, right? Um, love, what, love the kind of food I can pull off this. So uh, during, during the weekends, it's, it's usually my go-to depending, depending on what I'm cooking, depending on how much time I have. Um, so. Some, that's just something to be aware of. That's really it for cons, right? There isn't really too many drawbacks to, to something like this. Uh, this is hands down my favorite grill. Um, and, you know, if you get into this type of grill, you, you're not going to regret it. it. It just cooks some amazing food. Let's talk a little bit about some tips. So, number one tip, lump matters, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, you can go out and buy some inexpensive lump and you're going to have some problems, right? You want to spend some money and get some quality. Uh, my dad has a similar, not this particular one, uh, it's an off-brand, but it's, it's a ceramic style barbecue. Uh, and he bought some lump when he was first using it. I don't know where he bought it from, but he could not get it up the temperature whatsoever. And he's like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, blah, 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 blah. And we're, you know, he's 600 miles away. So we're kind of going over it on the phone. And I was like, dad, like what kind of lump did you buy? And he named some brand that I'd never heard of. I'm like, all right, there's your problem. You just spent what, 15 bucks in a bag of lump. Like that stuff's garbage. Go buy some good stuff. Uh, so do yourself a favor, buy some because a lot of people complain about not being able to get these things up to temperature and it's usually only one of two things either you're using really crappy lump or you've got your baskets overloaded and it's not breathing properly or you don't have enough lump burning uh, so that it can get up to temperature it's 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 very simple from that perspective so buy yourself some good lump um, if you're in the states uh, costco has the kimono joe road show where you can buy kimono joe uh, grills, but you can also buy their charcoal. So 
that's a great place to stock up because you can buy, you buy like two bags, you get one free because uh, it's like 30 pound bags instead of 20 pound bags and they're like 25 bucks. So, you know, Komodo Joe makes some great, it's called Big Block. Uh, uh, Fogo, Fogo makes some that I like to use. It works out really, really well. Um, Komodo Komodo makes their own. They've got two different kinds and theirs is very unique. They've got a charcoal or sorry, a, a coconut based one called uh, Coco Char. And the premise there is, is that it's made with coconut shells and it is a neutral burning fuel source. You know, depending on what type of uh, lump you use, they use different woods, they've got different flavor profiles. And the goal behind the Coco Char is that now you don't have your, your fuel source giving any flavor to the meat and now you can mold your, your um, smoking woods to the to the uh, desired taste that you're trying to get right so you know if you've got something that's very heavy on a, a mesquite flavor or something like that or hickory flavor and then you're you're trying to add in different smoke flavors you're going to get kind of a blend so they came out with that neutral it works really really well especially on a slow and low um, they also have a coffee one that's made with coffee wood and that one has a very very unique flavor tried it on steak many times my wife really likes it um, and then you get some that have got that real hardcore charcoal uh, flavor to them and then some that are somewhere in between. So you really have to play with it and figure out which one you like, but just don't cut corners uh, because you're going you're gonna to regret it in the long run. Um, another, another tip about something like this is get yourself a digital pit probe and a good thermometer. I have the Thermoworks um, Smoke X. Four, I think it's called and what it is is digital thermometer it's got a pit probe that I put right on the grate and then three other probes depending on you know how many, how many things I'm cooking what type of temperature I want to get uh, but you know you can cook off dome but you'll get better results if you're smoking if you're cooking off a great temperature so I'm always looking at that the other thing you could get is the meter plus um, they have a, a, a single version and a four version and that particular wireless probe has a um, uh, temperature of the meat and then a temperature of the pit uh, on the back of it. So it's all in one and it's wireless, so it works on a rotisserie, which is great. Uh, so get yourself a good thermometer and, you know, get some of the accessories. Like if you're looking at this guy, you're looking at Komodo Joe, they have a rotisserie, that's a must have. You can really cook some great food. Get a pizza stone, uh, cause you're gonna wanna do pizza and you know, once you have it on here, it'll be, I always tell pe people, it's kind of like, you know, people that have never had pizza off this, I tell them, hey, you're gonna need a, a glass of fine red wine for this pizza, cause it's gonna be so darn good. Uh, it is really, really delicious. Um, the other tip, just get a cover for it. It's, you know, take care of it. Um, and you know, in this particular one, you've got to really look after your grout. It's very simple to do. You just take some on your fin finger, wipe it down there. Uh, wait to the next day and then take some water with a sponge and it comes right off. Uh, but you've got to be aware that you don't want, if you've overheated this and cracked it, um, it will let water down and behind. You don't want that to happen. But get, get yourself a cover. Uh, and, you know, that's really it for tips. Uh, you know, I could do a whole video on tips on it, but I just want to give you some, some general things to be aware of. Um, let's talk about brands. So there are really three big players in, in this market. Big Green Egg, Komodo Joe, and Komodo Komodo. Um, I had a Komodo Joe, Big Joe, for a few years before I sold it to my buddy and I, and I upgraded this guy. Big Green Egg has been around the longest. Uh, they're unmistakably, they're green, obviously. Uh, but you know, the thing about that brand is that they haven't innovated. They've kind of rested on their name and they have not made any changes <laughs> over the years. Um, I, I think that, you know, some of their ex accessories were, you know, last time I looked at them were a little bit expensive just because it had that name on it. Uh, but the big thing is that they didn't innovate at all. So Komodo Joe came in the market, theirs are red, and, you know, they're on their third generation already. So I got mine, it was a second generation one where they introduced an airlift spring. These lids are heavy, right? So you want it spring loaded so that, you know, I can lift this up with a finger very easily. Um, so the second generation added that spring 
and uh, the command and uh, divide and conquer system. You know, they added some, some great things to it. The third generation has, a, it's a little bit taller, which I actually just learned. I didn't realize that, uh, but they have the, uh, it's a smoking system. Do your research before you do your videos, Jake. Uh, I can't remember what it is. A slow roller, that's what it is. But it's a thing that's supposed to generate more smoke inside the chamber. Um, and, you know, Komodo Joe has really innovated uh, a lot in their, their designs. They make a great product. Uh, and, you know, the pricing really is, is pretty good. Uh, especially if you do, the, you know, just, just Google uh, Komodo Joe Roadshow at Costco and you'll find the link. There's usually a schedule of where they're going to be and that's the one time you can really get a, a deal on a Komodo Joe and you can also get their charcoal. And depending on the store, sometimes they've got accessories that you can uh, buy as well at a discount. Uh, and then you get into the Komodo Komodo. Now the Komodo Komodo makes everything from a 16, a 19, uh, 21, a 23, a 32, up to a 42. 42 is massive, it weighs about 1,600 pounds. Um, and they're oval in design and a work of art, right? There's, there, this is, you know, um, this, is a, this is a luxury Kamado. Um, there's some great reasons why this is worth the money. Right, there's 125 pounds of stainless steel in this guy. Everything, these are all stainless steel. The basket inside is stainless steel. Uh, the hinging and everything, even the spring, and there's, there's like a, a socket that the spring goes in that's all stainless steel. I mean, these things are built like a tank. They will last forever if you take care of them. And they've got a lot of mass, right? These are handmade in Indonesia. Um, a gentleman uh, by the name of Dennis, uh, American that, that moved to Indonesia uh, many years ago. And what he does is they're built there. He designed them all. Um, he's a great guy if you ever have any questions about him. Um, but they're handmade there. They're shipped to California and then they ship worldwide from there. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of attention to detail that goes into something like this. He's always innovating. Um, like I said, we've got a NASA grade, um, NASA grade material here that holds the tiles on. We've got a cold smoker accessory. We've got lots of controls in the bottom for your airflow. Uh, it does have a port if you want to get one of the airflow controller units, like a, a, a barbecue guru or something like that. Not needed on something like this. Um, but this is just taking what a Komodo Joe has and next leveling it. Uh, if you go to their forums, you know, I, I remember when I was kind of shocked when I was reading and, and people that had a big green egg, they had a Komodo Joe, and they all said the food was better on this. And I was like, eh, I don't know, man. Food on the Komodo Joe is pretty darn good. And then I got this and I was like, wow. Uh, it, does, it does definitely take it up a, a layer. Uh, and it's really about uh, just the efficiency and the, the way that the air has to move through the charcoal uh, that just makes it a very, very clean burn. And, uh, you know, it turns out some, some great food. So, you know, the, the one thing I'll, I'll kind of backtrack to one tip. If you're looking at a Komodo Joe or an egg, get the bigger one. Um, the smaller ones are 18 inches. You can get a fair amount of food on there, uh, but this is going to be something that you're probably going to own for 10 or 15 years. And if you have, you're going to have some big parties or you're going to have family in town or you're going to have something like that and you don't want to run out of room, the Big Joe, which is 24 inches, definitely worth the money. Um, this guy went to, the, to the, uh, the 32 and I love having extra room. It just gives it that much more flexibility. And in this guy, I can do a, a true hot and cold zone. There's a basket splitter here. I have charcoal lit on one side of it. And this would be a true cold side and a true hot side. So that's one of the reasons for going up to a 32. Um, but, you know, that's kind of all I've got for you today. If you've got questions about any of the grills, my email address is in 
the description below. Uh, it's just one rum and cook at gmail.com. I'm always happy to answer questions. And you know, maybe you're making a buying decision, or maybe you're just cooking something and you want some input on it. Um, but you know, I'm always always happy to help. And thanks for watching. If you found some value in the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos. Do new videos every weekend. I'll see you soon.